Yeah, I found over my years of turning that the tool handles are probably every bit as important for comfort as how you stand, how sharp they are, how well they cut. There are so many different variations, it's kind of impossible to figure out what you like without trying a whole bunch of them. This particular handle, um, standard the way it came from one of the catalog stores. Ash handle, little bump here, fairly smooth, a couple little details there. Works fine. This is another type of handle that's been becoming popular over the years. It's metal. Has a couple of set screws in it so you can change to different tooling. It's okay. Round. I like the shape. Um, I don't like the feel of plastic too particularly much. Okay, this is a tool that a friend of mine made for me. Um, way fancier than anything I would ever make for myself. Again, a little bit of detail on it, a little knob on the end. I guess that's to keep your hand from slipping off. Again, fancier than I would use, but it still works. This is one of the earlier handles that I made for myself. Again, I prefer buying the steel separately and then putting it in my own handles. Big bulb on the end, which I don't really use, and pretty much a long shaft. It works, you know, plenty of handle there for leverage. This is a scraper handle I made. If you notice the stripe in the middle, this stripe is actually the exact same thickness as the metal up here. So basically what I do is cut this, cut the shape for the tang on the tool into this, then sandwich it between two other pieces and turn it out. So that gives it a good grip, good fit, good solid fit in there is not going to come loose. Now this is more of my standard handle nowadays. Pretty much just a straight cylinder. I found out I don't need the bumps. Sometimes I'm grabbing here, sometimes I'm in the middle, sometimes I'm on the handle end. Doesn't really make much difference. Um, they're just more comfortable. That's what feels good to me. I have actually thought of sometime maybe going down and getting a sledgehammer handle and cutting it into lengths, but then the problem you have with those is getting a ferrule of some sort on the end. You do need this here. This is a stress point. The fibers can split, especially if you have a catch, and this basically reinforces it. Dave Ellsworth does a handle which he turns kind of eccentric, like a sledgehammer handle, and then he takes some of the colored nylon twine or Dacron twine, wraps it around really tight, and then chases that with super glue, which should work for a good ferrule. This is another handle. This one is filled with lead shot. I believe the material is aluminum. The lead shot seems to be the new popular thing that's coming out there nowadays. Everybody at the last AAW symposium that I went to that was making modular tool handles had a little screw off cap on the end so you could fill it with lead shot. The idea is it makes it a little bit more weighty and it absorbs vibration. I don't particularly care for them. I'm generally grabbing higher on the gouge, so that's a counterweight. And as far as dampening vibration, the closer this is to the wood that you're cutting on the tool rest, the less vibration you're going to get out on the handle end. But some people really like them. And another thing that's coming out too with some of the foam covered handles or the metal handles is they have collet chucks where you just loosen it, slip in whichever tool you want, tighten it back up again. Uh, they're very nice, especially if you're doing a lot of traveling with your tools.